There used to be a pond about half a mile away from my old house that I would commonly go fishing in. It was nicknamed Daryl's Pond. I still have no idea who Daryl was or why it was called that, but nobody owned it, so people would once in a blue moon go fishing there as well. It was usually me by myself though. I had dug a pole into the ground where I would tie a noose to and from my small kayak. I'd say it was about 3 in the afternoon when I rode out to the middle of the pond, the sweet spot for getting a decent catch. There was another person coming out from the trees. I waved at him and gave him a smile. He hopped into a small boat floating by the edge of the pond and began to row over to me. As he got close enough where trying to speak to him wouldn't come off as obnoxious, I gave him a friendly, perfect day, isn't it? Yes, absolutely, he said. He didn't say anything after that, and I started to feel a bit awkward, as if I were obligated to keep some kind of conversation rolling now. So, uh, you come out here to throw some lines? I asked. No, I don't actually fish. Oh, well, it's never a bad day to relax on the pond, I said. He continued to row closer to me, until his boat collided with mine, creating a big thud. I was genuinely uncomfortable now. I didn't feel threatened, just weirded out. I was only 24 years old. This guy looked like he was late 40s or 50s. There was an awkward silence. I tried to just act like I was focused on trying to make a catch, but by now that wasn't even on my mind. This guy was weird. I didn't know what he wanted, and I was uncomfortable being so close to him. I felt him looking at me, or at least in my direction, as I faced halfway to the opposite direction of him. I took a quick glance to my right. Yeah, he was staring at me. I decided to be ballsy and lock eye contact with him. After about four seconds, he looked away. So, uh, where are you from? I asked him. Up there. He pointed behind himself, in the direction of the woodsy hill leading past the dirt road. Oh, you live by Suffolk? I asked. Um, uh, no. No, I'm not, he said. What made you decide to come out here? I said. Why not? I continued to try and uncomfortably fill the awkward silences that kept coming up. His responses were dry, he didn't contribute anything to what was barely a conversation. He just sat there not doing anything with half a smile on his face, looking either at me or in my general direction throughout. I was creeped out. My heart was racing at this point. I'd go as far as saying that I was nervous for my life. We were surrounded by trees in all directions in the middle of the pond. I started to row a bit closer to land, but in a very low-key kind of way, trying to play it off as me just trying to find a better spot to find some fish. I was horrified when I saw he was following me. <sighs> what a great day, huh? I felt a shake in my voice. I got close enough to the edge of the pond where I finally told the man, I think I'm going to call it a day. I turned to see his reaction. He was still staring at me, but his smile was gone now. I can't let you leave, he said. He lifted his flannel to expose a handgun sticking out of his jeans pocket. As soon as I could process what I was looking at, I dove out of the boat for land, ran the whole half mile uphill through the woods back to my house, and locked every door and window as soon as I made it home. I pulled down the blinds to the dining room window, leaving it open just a crack for peeking outside undetected. It started to get dark out, and I left every light in the house off, still peeking out to the front yard, making sure I wasn't followed. The time came when I finally decided I wasn't followed. I realize now, like you, that not calling the police immediately was a huge mistake. I kept my bedroom windows open to let the room air out. My bedroom was on the second floor, so I wasn't worried about being watched through the window. About half an hour after shutting the light and falling under the covers, I heard the sound of leaves crunching from outside. I sat up to hear it more clearly. It was definitely something walking around out there. Normally I would assume it was a deer or a bear, but after what just happened, I, I was still in paranoia mode. I sat up as still as a statue, except for my shaking out of fear, waiting as the sounds of the steps stopped. Hey buddy, you up there? 
Are you trying to sleep? Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. I felt like a hundred pounds just fell directly onto my chest. It was the same voice. I knew it right away. I didn't make a sound. I crept out of the room quietly downstairs to the kitchen and grabbed the phone, practically crawling on my way out to avoid being seen through the open blinds. I called 911 like I should have earlier in the temporary safety of my bedroom. I made sure to whisper into the phone as I was still hoping that he hadn't yet heard or spotted me. Twenty minutes felt like an hour as I sat behind my bed, waiting for the police to arrive in constant fear that I would hear glass breaking from downstairs or a thud on the back door, or even just a voice again from down below my window outside. The police did a thorough investigation of the property in nearby woods, turning up nothing. They suggested I stay with a friend or a family member for a few days, and so I did. I never heard from or saw the man again, but I still moved a month later. I couldn't deal with the constant fear and paranoia of being watched through my windows. I feel much more comfortable fishing out by the bay now. There was this one time I joined my brother-in-law Jack on a fishing trip with him, a couple of his friends, and my sister. He came from money, so he always had an easy life, and ever since my sister married him, it's been the same for her. I packed everything I would need to spend the night on his boat in a small backpack. I drove out to the wealthier side of town by his house, which was by the bay. He lived right by the water, like it was actually in his backyard. He even had a small pre-built wooden dock leading to his luxurious boat with the name Lexi painted on, which is my sister's name. He was inspired by Forrest Gump to do that. He's living the dream life, that much I'm sure. We set sail early in the morning. He had packed tons of food and snacks, and lots of hamburger meat because unsurprisingly, they had installed a barbecue onto the boat. They have always had to have everything that cost money, and it's always been infuriating. To be honest, a few hours into the trip, it wasn't even as fun as I thought it would be. Only one large-mouthed bass had been caught, and that was of course by Jack. They were all getting really drunk. I tried to persuade my sister to let me drink, but she kept scolding me, saying no, since I was only 17 at the time. She was always a nagging buzzkill, and at that moment, I was questioning why I even agreed to go with them. The only part of the trip I was enjoying was being able to relax and tan on the back deck of his unnecessarily large boat. The sky started to turn a beautiful orange as the sun began to set. Jack put the burgers on the grill, which to me seemed odd. Three fish had been caught by that time, which would have been a perfect, more appropriate dinner, but uh, I would definitely prefer burgers over fish, so I didn't complain. By the time we were done eating, it was dark out. There was something so calming yet unsettling about being in the middle of the ocean at night. It's almost like being in space. Nothing around you as far as the eye can see, and without your vessel, you'd be as good as dead. They were all insanely drunk and or high by now, blasting music and screaming and laughing. They eventually invited me to play Cards Against Humanity with them inside, so I did. I didn't have anything else to do anyway. There was an extra beer sitting on the counter by the small bar, so I just grabbed it. I was long past the point of caring now, and my sister was not in a state of mind to be nagging me anymore. About three beers in, I was finally able to loosen up and enjoy myself with a decent buzz. I had to lower the music a good amount earlier because I couldn't even hear myself talking. Jack and his buddies were completely shit-faced now. My sister was drunker than I'd ever seen her, but she wasn't quite as bad as them. It was fine though, they were all adults trying to have a good time, safe and secluded on a boat in calm waters, far from any land where they could cause anyone any harm but things took a horribly unexpected turn. Over the now much lower music, me and one of Jack's friends noticed a noise coming from outside. I turned off the music completely. There was the sound of two men calling for help from outside. We all rushed outside, or at least I rushed, to the side of the boat. There over the ledge was a much smaller boat with two Indian men looking up at us. I asked them what the problem was. One of them told us they were out of food and gas and needed help. 
I looked at everyone else. I didn't feel too good about this situation, but everyone else was not even close to a correct state of mind where they should be making important decisions. I felt like I had the burden of deciding what to do. Jack told them to wait there while he went to get the ladder. He tripped on his way and dropped his bottle of beer. I figured I would hate myself if I chose not to help two stranded seagoers, so I helped Jack in carrying the ladder over to the edge and hooking it to the railing. The two men climbed up on board and thanked all of us. Jack, my sister, and their friends couldn't even speak coherent sentences to the two men, so I had to apologize and told them they had a little too much to drink. The two men didn't even seem to acknowledge my statement. They looked at Jack and asked him if we had any extra food. We led them inside to the kitchen. Jack grabbed the leftover burgers from the counter and they shoveled them down. I didn't feel right about this situation. It made me uncomfortable. Jack clumsily handed them a jerry can full of gasoline and the two men thanked us before climbing back down the ladder. I felt better now. We all went to sleep after that. Jack and my sister got the bedroom while me and their two friends had to sleep on the pullout cot and couches. I was rolling around the rock hard couch for about an hour trying to get some sleep. I eventually had to get up to get a drink and use the bathroom. Jack told us to pee into the ocean to conserve the water on the boat. I opened the door expecting nothing but the sound of the calm water splashing, but instead, I heard the faint sound of a boat motor along with the splashing of water that would come with a sailing boat. The pitch blackness surrounding the boat prohibited me from finding the source of the sound. I hopped up top by the controls and flipped on the switch for the searchlight. The beam of light provided the perfect amount to search the surrounding waters. Nothing so far. I turned it 90 degrees, nothing, 180 degrees, nothing. Then I reached about three quarters of a whole spin around, and there was the boat from before. It was coming closer, and at that exact moment, I heard the gut-wrenching, blood-curdling scream of one of the guys from below. I jumped all the way back down to deck level and ran back inside. One of Jack's friends was standing in the corner of the room, while the other was sitting up in reaction to the scream. That was followed by Jack and my sister bursting out of the bedroom to see what was going on. He formed a barely audible sentence, saying he saw two figures standing over him. They apparently ran out the front door to the deck. We all ran to see if they were still there, but they were nowhere in sight. I pointed them in the direction of where I saw the boat. The searchlight was still aimed in that exact position, but by then the boat was already gone. We never managed to find them after that. We searched high and low for what they could have stolen. All that we found was missing were a couple of cans of gasoline and Jack's wallet and keys which he had left on the kitchen table. We had to speed all the way back to Jack's house that night. It took four hours to make it back, but nobody had broken in. He used the spare key hidden in the backyard to get inside. Jack and my sister had the lock changed the next day. The scary part, a few weeks ago, their camera systems caught two suspicious men wearing hoods walk up to their front door and seemingly attempt to unlock it, but failing, then quickly running off. We're 99% sure it was them. I was 21 years old and I was fishing with my 84 year old grandfather for the first time. We took an hour long drive from our suburban home to a more desolate part of the state. He always went fishing in this one particular lake that no one knew about where he always managed to leave with coolers full of fish. My grandpa was a hardcore fisher, I'll say that right now. I never even knew there were different terms for the steps of fishing. He was throwing terms at me that I didn't understand left and right, even during the car ride there, which finally ended when we veered off the main quiet road and down about two miles of dirt trails. He parked his jeep at the side of the trail, and from there we lugged a small boat through some dense forest. At 84 years old, my grandpa was no weakling. In fact, I was becoming exhausted from carrying the boat, but I didn't want to show him that by asking to stop for a break, because that would just be humiliating if he could lift it longer than I could. I'll skip ahead to when we were actually sitting in the boat fishing. So he just got done showing me how to actually get the line and the hook in the water. 
After that, he didn't say a thing. He seemed to be concentrating really hard on what he was doing. I turned around to ask him a question. He seemed to be leaning in, focusing on something in the water. He didn't respond to my question, so I just resumed concentration on the water. I turned around like 20 seconds later out of curiosity, and he was leaning even closer now. I thought something was wrong with him. I put my hand on his shoulder, and that's when I heard splashing sounds. My grandpa seemed to push something back into the water, and then yelled at the top of his lungs for me to paddle as fast as I could back in the direction we came. My heart was racing. I didn't know what happened, but I knew it was something bad. As soon as the boat hit the dirt, my grandpa was moving as fast as he could off the boat and back to the car. We left the boat and equipment behind. When we got to the car, he stepped on it down the trails. All the while I was screaming at him to answer me, to tell me what happened. He seemed to have to gather his thoughts before finally, ten minutes into the drive, saying, I was looking down into the water. I knew I saw something. It kept getting closer to the surface. It became clearer as it got closer, and I could swear I saw what looked like a face. And then it got even closer, and as I was leaning in to get a better look, something reached out and grabbed a hold of me. That was the most I could get out of him until a few weeks later when he tried his best to describe what he saw, and from the description he gave, I remember it sounding almost like he was describing a human face. Almost. Perhaps I remember best his single sentence. All I know is, it wasn't no fish. <laughs>